I've never been against drinking coffee, but if somebody struggles to get out of bed in the morning without a cup of coffee, then I'd really start to question the quality and efficiency of their adrenal glands. What's up guys, my name is Lucas and today I'm here to talk to you about some potential causes and modalities and treatments to manage adrenal fatigue. So for those of you who are brand new to my channel, my mission is to bring you guys the most cutting edge health information that you'll struggle to find on Google. So please be sure to like this video, hit that subscribe button below. And if you have any questions or comments throughout the video, leave them below as I do my best to respond to each and every single one. The information depicted in this presentation is purely for informational purposes only. Please consult your healthcare professional before making any changes to your lifestyle or routine. This is not medical advice. So of course, today we are here to discuss adrenal fatigue. And what I will do is look at some potential treatments and solutions to help people deal with adrenal fatigue type symptoms. So first of all, we need to look at what is adrenal fatigue? Adrenal fatigue is a term applied to a collection of non-specific symptoms such as body aches, fatigue, nervousness, anxiety, sleep disturbances, digestive issues, but it's actually not a formal or official medical diagnosis unless somebody has been formally diagnosed with a different type of disease known as Addison's disease, which is an autoimmune destruction of the adrenal gland itself. And in this case, it actually requires exogenous hormone therapy, which means the person may have to go on mineral corticoids or glucocorticoids for life. What's really important is that we learn about the adrenal gland itself. Bear in mind, most of us have two adrenal glands. Some people have one removed or only living with one kidney, but majority of us have two adrenal glands and it's called adrenal because it sits above the renal glands, aka the kidneys. So ad meaning above the kidneys. So it sits above the kidneys. And as you can see, the adrenal gland actually has a variety of functions. We have three different tissue types within the adre adrenal gland itself. We have the zona glomerulosa, which is the adrenal cortex. We have the zona fasciculata, which is the adrenal cortex as well. And then the zona reticularis and the adrenal medulla. So the way I look at it is a great way to remember it is salt, sugar, sex, fight or flight. Salt referring to the zona glomerulosa, which releases mineral corticoids such as aldosterone, which retains sodium. Then we have the zona fasciculata, which ultimately governs the glucocorticoids. By the way, guys, cortisol is actually a glucocorticoid, which means that it can increase one's glucose blood sugar levels. It actually has a regulatory effect there. And we'll touch on this soon. In addition, the zona reticularis contain, well, helps to secrete some of the sex hormones such as DHEA. And then the adrenal medulla also modulates and secretes norepinephrine and epinephrine, otherwise known as noradrenaline and adrenaline. So here are some signs and symptoms of adrenal fatigue. Kindly ask you to question whether you have any of these symptoms. So salt cravings or sodium cravings, difficulty waking up in the morning, low blood sugar or hypoglycemia, low blood pressure or hypotension, a weak immune system, so often getting colds, lightheadedness, impaired cognitive function, low body temperature, increase in skin pigmentation due to elevated ACTH, psychiatric symptoms such as memory impairment, depression, anxiety, psychosis, reduced consciousness, delirium, and finally, poor stress tolerance. These are a myriad of symptoms that are associated with adrenal fatigue, and one doesn't have to display all of these symptoms. They may have some, and obviously the degree of severity will differ from individual to individual. What actually causes adrenal fatigue? This is actually a very challenging question to directly find robust scientific evidence to support. However, we know that there are many factors that contribute to adrenal fatigue, beginning with extreme trauma or the death of a loved one or a family member. 
that can ultimately lead to a change in the in the receptor sites in the brain that actually govern cortisol output and release. In addition, we have certain types of infections or stealth infections, whether that be acute or chronic. We have repeated stresses. We have emotional stress, certain types of allergies, overexertion or overexercise, smoking, lack of sleep, poor eating habits, sugar or refined sugar and white flour, certain drugs and medications, too little or too much exercise, nutrient deficiencies, marital stress, we got caffeine, fear, and psychological stress. So ultimately there are many potential causes of adrenal fatigue and it's important that an individual looks at their specific causes and tries to address them directly. So here's the first thing that somebody should look at when trying to support themselves if they're struggling with the adrenal fatigue type symptoms. So the very first one is to balance blood sugar. Now, the reason being is that you can see in this diagram below that anytime our blood sugar dips too low or we become hypoglycemic, cortisol is actually secreted by the adrenal glands to help bring that or raise that blood sugar back up to a healthy range. So you can think about it like this. If you eat a very high sugar meal without sufficient amount of fiber or protein, it's gonna rapidly spike your blood sugar and that's gonna to lead to a rebound rise in cortisol when your blood sugar starts to dip one to two hours after the meal. So it depends on the meal itself, but you can see that we're constantly taxing our body's cortisol system if we're alternating between high blood sugar and low blood sugar. So really our goal for adrenal fatigue support is to keep that blood sugar stable. And you guys know that I've spoken about various blood sugar hacks, one of which is dihydroberberine. I've spoken about on my channel before about the benefits of this particular herb to uh, modulate and balance blood sugar. The next adrenal fatigue support is one of my favorite herbs known as shilajit. Now shilajit is very well researched to protect the body against a variety of stress. But this particular study was titled, Shilajit attenuates the behavioral symptoms of chronic fatigue syndrome by modulating the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis and mitochondrial bioenergetics in rats. So Shilajit has the ability to preserve the actual efficiency of the adrenal gland when faced with stress. So Shilajit not only helps with improving one's cortisol output, but it also has a normalizing effect on the sympathetic versus parasympathetic nervous system and it actually shifts one's predominant state towards a parasympathetic state. And that is very obvious because we see research suggesting that Shilajit can have a GABAergic effect and a pro-dopamine effect and it even lowers serotonin. So we can see that Shilajit is a very versatile supplement that can be used to support one if they're undergoing any of the symptoms associated with adrenal fatigue or burnout. So you'll see a link to Shilajit in the video description below. So obviously Shilajit is very diverse in terms of its effects in the body. It is traditionally known as a Rasayana which means a cure-all in traditional Indian medicine system, so the Ayurvedic medicine system. And Shilajit has also been used by many athletes and even Sherpas to cope with the difficult environments such as being at altitude or in a hypoxic environment, so low oxygen environment. So you can see here, Shilajit contains many bioactives. We know that Shilajit has adaptogen qualities. It's a rejuvenator. It has anti-aging effects. It is considered an aphrodisiac, improves sperm production. It's got anti-diabetic qualities, antioxidant effects. It's an anti-inflammatory, it's neuroprotective, it's osteoprotective, so protecting the bones, and it has anti-ulcer and wound healing enhancing properties as well. So Shilajit is definitely a versatile supplement. You can see some of the bioactives, humic acid, fulvic acid, the dibenzopyrones, and some other minerals and trace minerals and elements as well. So 
definitely a useful tool to combat adrenal fatigue. So my adrenal fatigue support tip number three is to correct nutrient deficiencies. Now the reason being is that many of the nutrients and vitamins that we get from our food actually help the body to synthesize and regulate the hormones that are secreted by the adrenal glands. So we can see that vitamin C is an essential cofactor for the biosynthesis of cortisol. So in a vitamin C deficient state, and even a low iron state, one has poor cortisol secretion. We need sufficient amounts of vitamin C and other minerals and vitamins to actually synthesize and to act as the building blocks to actually create the foundational hormones for longevity and vitality. You can also see that vitamin B5, folate and vitamin C, they work synergistically to help convert progesterone into cortisol. So you can see the diagram here, we start with cholesterol as the beginning substrate. That then goes down to pregnenolone, then from pregnenolone to progesterone or to DHEA, down towards the sex hormones, testosterone and estrogen, or towards aldosterone, which remember aldosterone is a mineral corticoid that helps the body retain salt. So here's my adrenal fatigue support tip number four. We have reduced toxicity. Remember how I said before that there are many causes of adrenal fatigue? Unfortunately, some of these heavy metals such as arsenic and mercury and cadmium, these are positively charged. Now, what that means and what the implications of this are is that these heavy metals can build up in the body. And this particular study was titled Mechanisms of Arsenic Disruption on Gonadal, Adrenal and Thyroid Endocrine Systems in humans a review and what this study looked at was how arsenic can saturate in various organs in the body and specifically the adrenal glands and compromise adrenal functioning and, and disrupt mitochondrial signaling in these glands so realistically it's just like carrying extra weight on the body when we have these heavy metals in our body so it makes actually synthesizing these hormones a lot more difficult for the body and it can disrupt many other um, downstream biological mechanisms as well. So a solution to reduce toxicity, I've spoken about it on my Instagram before, is zeolite. You can see on the diagram here that zeolite is negatively charged. And what that means is that it binds to a lot of these positively charged molecules, such as heavy metals, toxins, mercury, air pollution, lead. And so what it does is it strips these heavy metals out from the body and helps to excrete them in the urine. So you'll see a link to purchase zeolite in the video description below. Zeolite's definitely a versatile supplement that I think most humans will see benefit from when used on a cyclical basis, say four weeks on, one week off. Guys, that pretty much wraps up my video today. If you learned something new, please help to share my channel around. Be sure to check out all of my other social media platforms, my Instagram, my podcast, and my website as well. I've got some epic content and products there. Thank you guys for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.